Amazing, amazing, my beautiful people. How can we know unless someone explains to us the best show in 254 in East and Central Africa and the world at large with your best host, Alan Hoy. And today we have the wisdom, well, as we said earlier, that he will reintroduce himself to those people who don't know him. And we pick up from where we left last time. We promised you we will be here, same place, same time. Yes. And we are here. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Karibu sana. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Reintroduce yourself, but no swa kujue ni nani. Stack ni ku introduce wemu nyuna ji introduce. Okay. Yep. Uh, for those who were here last time, I said my name was Reverend Henry Ambundo. Uh, professionally, I'm a psychological counselor and also a preacher man. <laughs> I like it when you use the word a preacher man. <laughs> <laughs> it comes to my mind another reggae song a preacher man okay we preach what a uh, preacher man preaches what they don't do but they tell gospel, people yes, yes. so gospel of jesus christ i mean i mean i mean i mean and uh, we have to we left we were talking about family and children yes and how we ought to raise up our children in a godly way yes yes yes, yes. so what is this wisdom that God has added you on that? Now, how do we do this? Because again, you say the children are gift from God. Mm -hmm. We don't determine when to get them. Yes. But the people tell you, hey, science has made big strides at the moment. They can tell you the next child you get. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's true. And that's part of the knowledge that God gives uh, his creation. Yeah. The people calling themselves scientists. That's the knowledge God has given them. They just use it in the wrong way to try to disapprove the, uh, the existence of God, but it's God who is giving them yes, the wisdom. they need to recognize where the wisdom comes from. Yeah. Yes. I told someone this. If a scientist comes to me and creates something out of nothing, I will respect them. But as long as they're still using the available resources that God has given them to disapprove the ex dear existence <laughs> of God, <laughs> I don't respect them at any cost. Yeah, you shouldn't point. respect them. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because God can use uh, even a donkey. To do something great. To do something great. Manifest his power. So a donkey cannot take credit on that? No. That's why the donkey walked on uh, a carpet of garments into Jerusalem because it was carrying the author of all the majesty. <laughs> wow. It was carrying Jesus himself. Yes, the following day the it was wondering why am I not walking on the carpet today? <laughs> <laughs> That's so amazing. So we have these families where you know uh, uh we ask God for children, then God gives us children. The gift of God comes in. Yes. And sometimes the gift of God doesn't come in the way we thought it will come in. Yes. And we're talking about sometimes we get disabled children. Mm -hmm. But you know, there are families who will hide these children. They mm -hmm. don't want people to see them because, you know, uh, you know, it's like to them, they feel like it's a shame for them. Yeah. And there are other committees that say that is a what a curse. Mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. Like, how do you handle this case mm -hmm. as a Christian? As a Christian, hoping that uh, our listeners are Christians or uh, are on the way of becoming Christians. We said that everything that we have, everything that is created, God is a creator. And what we see as faulty into the eyes of God, it's not faulty. It's perfect. Mm -hmm. Because every creation, everything he created, he looked at it and said, oh, this it's is beautiful. very beautiful, very good. That what he used the word, it was good. So even with the such disadvantaged children, they are still a gift, a gift from God. Yeah. So we don't call them a curse? No, mm -hmm. no. That's a, a soul. So we God. raise them just the way we are raising these other children. Exactly. And scientists will say there's no one who is perfect. We all have our, our weaknesses in one or the other. Like uh, Nikisema Kwasolo nasema wazimu wetu ni tofauti tu lakini kila mtu ni wazimu kwa kiwa mkulani. At a certain level. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. True. Um, I, I, would, I would say um, as such a child that God may bring into our family, God has a reason for such a thing to happen. 
sometimes we there are things that we come across in life and we are asking is this god or is this satan and including even death yeah we are confused when we are talking of death when it comes into our families sometimes we say the devil or satan has caused it sometimes say god has called him home but to god death doesn't change god so what we see through our gift that god gives us to us god does not look at that gift as we look at it god looks at it with a different eye like it's perfect it's perfect perfect but it's us with our fallen nature that looks at it with the, another eyes like ai mungu si kusema hii yeah. and nisema unipatie mtoto lakini sio hii yeah. but again there are places where other people are just asking god hata kama nikiwete nipatie tu exactly so is it us who are not really thankful and grateful for what god is doing in our life because we have a uh like uh oh, like we have a picture of what we really want and they will you see them say you know god gives you he knows the desires of our hearts and uh, he says pray and i'll give it to you mm-hmm. ask and it shall be given unto you Indeed. seek and you shall Indeed. find Indeed. knock and the door shall be opened unto you yes. and they'll tell you i've done all these things but why is god giving me a such a thing i'm a faithful man of god yes. and this is to the pastors and the servants of god mm-hmm. If it happens to you in this banner what do you do because I know there are servants of God who still hide these children because they feel such shame to them. Yeah, that's what they feel that it's shame. That's why I say it way if we are talking to Christians or talking to those that soon are on the way <laughs> of becoming Christians. What you need to know first of all you need to know God first. Then when you know God first then you will start designing his will in your life in your family in your community in your society and then you will appreciate who actually god is in your family or in your life and when god is allowing such a things to happen or such a gift to come into your family he has a reason maybe now he wants now to make you depend on him make your 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 relationship may pass parents much closer because you will now work together to bring up this disabled child and to, to do that you must depend on somebody who is able to help you to do that that is god but you will be surprised if you do not know god there are some families where men decide the the wife or the family and disappear mm-hmm. because we have a such a gift in the such family. Such a gift in the family. Yes. Or they would tend to go to the magicians, witch doctors and try to find the problem uh, where the problem is. Uh, true. And I, sometimes it leads to break bre- uh, okay marriage breakups, yeah. Yes, mm-hmm. because uh, some of them actually decide leave the home and go. You find a mother with uh, such a child mm. and he says the father just walked away and disappeared because of this instead of now coming together and work together to accept this child and bring him or her up instead of stigmatizing him or uh-huh. her and hiding him and sometimes they start, they will start talking about you know uh, maybe it's the curse from the father's side or from the mother's side or maybe the parents okay this is the community now maybe the parents did something wrong that made uh, the child come out the way it is yeah huh? And you remember the story in the Bible where Jesus uh someone asked Jesus uh, the the cause of the illness that that person that Jesus healed and Jesus tells them you know what all this happens not the fault of their parents no. all this happens so that the glory of God God can be glorified in this situation exactly so that's what we're trying to say that people should now start try to find God and ask God true their relationship and God becomes close and close yes but sometimes God might not answer you even in that case what do yes. you do it's true when you are asking god for something you expect three answers it will be a yes a no or a wait it's not yet time so you have to accept his will and go by his plan like passing reverend how do you accept a no in this situation you have a child you ask for a child and god gave you one yes. but this child cannot stand or talk yes they are bedridden 
Mm-hmm. And that means for the rest of the life that you'll be with them, mm-hmm. they'll be that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then you've prayed and prayed for God to change the situation, but God does not change the situation. The situation remains the same. Mm-hmm. I know there are many people who give up on God mm-hmm. and tell, ah, ah, mungu, mm-hmm. mimi nimejaribu, nimejaribu, ja, utaki kunijibu, ya imetosha. Let me find another way. And there are people who have tried to find other ways out of that. Do they find a solution? Even I when they do that, I don't know. go to my chief. <laughs> <laughs> yes. They have tried as much as they can, but... Do they succeed? The they have not. No. Yep. So the only person you need to depend on is one who gave you that gift. When you are given a gift, you need to go back. The give of the gift. Yeah. If you feel the gift is not what you deserve. Yes. yes. <laughs> Last going time back, said, it doesn't uh, mean you are saying replace. Uh, You'll it's advise, not something that you bought that you need to replace. I advise you how to use that gift. Maybe you didn't know how to operate it. Hey, I tell you there is wisdom over here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> you don't if if uh, the, the, the inventor of uh, Toyota or a manufacturer, mm-hmm. if you don't follow the manual, so you should go back at the, the, the inventor. And ask the manual yeah, how, to the money, how to operate it. How to operate It's not about you, the yes, buyer. Yes. It's about the guy who made it. Yes. And they have more knowledge on how to, uh, to, to, to work around it when it has a problem. And it works. So, guys, this is what you're trying to say. In case you find that you step in that scenario where you're asking God for a gift of a child, then God gives you a child who is disabled. You don't need to find a solution in any other place. The solution is still in God. Yes. And God might change the situation or might never change the situation. But you still have to live with that situation the way it is because it's God who gave you the way it is. When you go back to God, what he gives you, he gives you peace. Mm-hmm. And peace is the solution of every problem. It's not found in comfort that around, it's around you. Not in money. Mm. Nowhere. Only the peace that comes from Jesus Christ himself. He says, not as the world gives, but as I give. The moment you have peace, the love you'll have for that child will be beyond the love you may give to another person. Child that you received yeah. who is, uh, yeah. who is yeah. normal as the you might think. will be your darling. Yeah. Because God has given you peace at heart. And with that responsibility that he has given you, you you have joy carrying out that responsibility because he has given you peace. And when you have peace, you have everything. And that is, I think that peace is what will determine if God has answered your prayer or not. Exactly. Because sometimes we wait for God to answer our prayers. That the walk, child walk. may start walking. Yeah. I, 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 for us to glorify God. Yeah. And you see the hula balos that are happening on television. You, yes. you get that, yeah? Mm-hmm. Uh, pastors, the supernatural men and women of God yeah. doing their hula balos and their skits and their kung fu on the televisions mm-hmm. trying to <laughs> prove a point to people. Yeah. And people are falling for that. Mm-hmm. Yes, people are falling for that. And they're taking their kids there. And yeah. uh, funny enough, some of those kids are not <laughs> healed because most of the things they are doing are state managed. Okay, let me not talk about that. We'll get to that later. Yeah. Yeah. So you're saying that the peace that God gives is what we need and that is the proof that God has answered your prayer. Yes. He might not be too loud enough mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. the voice that you want to hear but that peace inside yourself and accepting that this is the gift that God has given me and it's God who gives. So I'll ask for guidance from him on how to live with this gift. True. Let me give you an example. You, you may be lacking shoes. You really looking for shoes and you are unable to get some shoes and you are cursing yourself i can't even afford shoes but there is somebody who doesn't have a foot to put in that shoes you are admiring so when you realize that and look at that and say god has blessed me even without shoes then you appreciate who god is because you have a better thing than the other person who doesn't have a foot to ask for that shoe and you have the food. So there is, like you said, you have a soul like gift God has given you. Somebody else doesn't have one. So when you start looking at that angle, but knowing that it's God who is responsible for everything around, 
then you start finding his peace because you have recognized him. Okay. And there's another thing that can that happens in our families. You know, uh you get married. Yes. Then uh, for whatever given reasons that uh I think we sorted that one out as per us as Christian, there's no reason for divorce. Mm. There's always a way to talk about it. Yeah. For whatever reason they divorced. And then uh, uh the other party ended up marrying and the other party ended up getting married. Yes. But their children involved mm. in between these two parties mm. now how do, what's the best way of co-parenting because that has been the biggest problem even in our families mm. men will tend to leaving their children in charge of their their wives mm. yes and the other wives will tend to throwing the children to the husband's side mm. to the ex-husband's side mm. and we have nothing to do with these things take care of your children or okay with all those things that people come up with mm. so what do you think is the best way? because i believe children I innocent very in whatever matter that happened in between the father and the mother very yep. innocent very innocent how do you co-parent how do you bring these people to, together in a christian way now how it starts first of all although you are now gotten into a second marriage which uh, is outside our topic sure. we, which we dealt with the last time mm-hmm. but it has happened you have gotten into that state mm-hmm. First of all, you should know that these children are innocent. This is the first place. That's the first step. Secondly, even if you have gotten together, assuming you are not Christians or you are Christians and you happen to be there, then uh, let's look at it out of the people called side. Look at it. You are, you are a husband and a wife. Yeah, mm-hmm. in the people who call uh, the scriptures, you are supposed to be one body. Sure. So if you are one body, so that children from both sides are gifts for both of you, mm-hmm. you must treat them equally, the same. You don't uh, say these are my children and these are mine, yours. That is the ideal way, and uh, some will say it's so easy to talk, but when it comes in terms of actions. That is where uh, the rubber meets there. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And that's why Christ first, everything else next. Let Christ teach us how to move on. And teaching, like you teach your own biological child, should be the same to your your. your to your someone else's child. Yes. And that is be to the person who was with your husband even before you left. Yes. So we know uh, the children doesn't become as a, doesn't come in as a threat because most of the people say, hey, ah, watoto wakikuja hapa, there is mm-hmm. a possibility mama watafanya nini? Atarudi. Mm-hmm. Na this other husband huko kina nasema, ah, ah, watoto ni wakikuja hapa, there is a possibility hawa watu wanakutananga wakifanya mambo ya? Yeah. Mambo ya. Let me use what we use in a local language. Sio ari yako sirela maroro. You understand that? Repeat it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, guys. <laughs> what I'm talking about here is Chinese, and uh, the translation in English is like whatever you've ever uh, taken or eaten or had part in it. There's a time you dream about it and still go back to it. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So it means you are not one. You are living like two different units on one roof. <laughs> <laughs> there is that insecurity among these two people and the world that we're living in. People don't want to accept the fact that it happened. It happened. We go. There are children that we need to take care. And as much as we're thinking of the children, there might na- there might be nothing else that is happening. Mm. Like some every person is like, ah, macho yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we we said that uh, all these are your your daughter, sons and daughters. Sure. As a father or a mother. Mm. And if you have to do exactly, do exactly the same. Because they are in your house and you are still together as a wife and a husband. They either be your the crown or your crown or your fruit of your womb or not. And by doing that, it means you have to start uh, training them in a godly way if you are Christians. And God has told us how to 
train them so that uh, we are not ashamed of them. If you don't train a child, you'll, you'll be the shame of the mother. Or if you train, you're the crown of a father, or sons and daughters. Yeah. So the available resources are distributed to these people equally, whether yes. they are step sons or step step yeah, daughters, yes, or biological yes, sons, yes, or biological yes. daughters. You don't separate them. That is the ideal part of it. Mm-hmm. But we've heard stories of where step mothers or step fathers are misusing, even to a point where step fathers are sleeping with their step children because they'll say ah see what to an abomination i see what to wrong they never be they're not biologically linked unto me mm. they're not my children mm. and they make use of that this wickedness total wickedness yeah. you can't do that even to 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 somebody who is uh, not in your house if you are doing that and then uh, you know where you belong something needs to happen to you <laughs> that is what we see in this world and the, the level of jealousy that people have uh, uh, negative jealousy you know god is also jealous a jealousy god yeah. for he doesn't want us to worship any other person if, if not him yeah mm-hmm. he loves us and he mm-hmm. gets his love mm-hmm. to us jealously mm-hmm. but the negative jealousy that we have we want to destroy the other person because mm-hmm. you think you're trying to guard whatever you have it should be yeah, just negative. just the jealousy like mm-hmm. calls uh, now thank you for using that word way. just jealousy yeah mm-hmm. then there is the negative jealousy that people have against yeah. the other person's children and all mm. that yeah mm. Mm. that is evil we should not uh, surface in your home yeah because i believe the bible speaks of us loving even our enemies and i don't believe it's just these children are enemies they are not our enemies first yeah. we say they are very innocent very they innocent. never knew whatever happened even mm-hmm. between their father and their mother mm-hmm. and all that but whatever happened happened yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. and most of the time people say we moved on mm-hmm. so squeeze kuna msemo wanasema unaoga unarudi so unaoga unarudi soko eh na unapata mwingine pia kikiumana pia uko na watoto na pia unaoga unarudi so soko na soko unatafuta mwingine pia kikiumana wewe uko na watoto na yeye ah raha unajipa mwenyewe raha jipe mwenyewe Yes, that's what people are trying to say outside about what they're trying to what they don't really understand is they are trying to destroy everything yeah. because one thing i want to believe is you know even osama has role models mm-hmm. yeah people would like to be like osama eh? yeah like that that they thief just in, want to destroy everything yes mm-hmm. they are that thief in the community the mm-hmm. way he steals the way he does his thing that just people like wow meaning mm-hmm. so what i'm trying to say is Even the worst of the worst they still have the role models in the communities. There are people who wants to be like them. And especially some nowadays so we are uh, you know most of the role models that people are looking at are people who have money whether they got that money in the right way or the wrong way. <laughs> That's a very terrible way of uh, looking at it. That's why we we as Christians if we are not careful and we are relating the world then we are lost. Because uh, in our when we are bring our children up we want to bring them according to the society standards education money mm-hmm. and, but that's not enough that's not the way god wants us to teach he tells train them in the ways of god mm-hmm. not in the ways of the world that's why children the the the, the, the current generation sorry to use the current generation because i'm talking to talk about gener- my ge- yes, generation. The current generation my generation yes. Eh? Yeah. yes yeah when we were growing up and a person of my age and i'm younger and we are going to meet on the way and you know up country the way the paths are very narrow sure i was to step off the road but nowadays we are walking on a pavement walk path and it three young men are walking together shoulder to shoulder if we don't find where to step and give them way you'll fall in the trench <laughs> because they can't give you way <laughs> but was it pia some was it pia they also say if you call them hey baba baba ni wewe hey mzee mzee ni wewe mm. so like what is not really happening because i know we living in that it's this generation but again the old some old people who don't really understand who they are they are trying to find their, their space even in this, in this. generation mm-hmm. and they want to work out things like this generation. generation and as you said most people will want to raise their children according to the standards of every community yes. or those successful people who have made it in in mm-hmm. our communities mm-hmm. but we said success 
most of the success that we will see they are not from God. No. Yeah. They are not from God. Mm. People have different ways of making success in, in, in the end uh, yep. you as a parent you will regret in the end. Mm. You will regret badly. So I let you get it, you gave them money, you gave them everything, but you are crying every day. And especially with the world and the way it's changing and the laws and the funny constitutions. <laughs> you will bring you another man saying this is my wife. <laughs> I think that would be the greatest disappointment ever as a yeah, parent, eh? yeah. Yeah. That would be the greatest disappointment as a parent. Yeah. But it's the freedom that you gave them. They say children children Because rights or you didn't human teach rights. Them, you didn't teach them in God's way. Yep. Today if you are you, you found your son on the road uh, misbehaving and I, I gave him a few strokes of the road. Next time I'll be in behind the bus. Of course you're my enemy. Mm. Who gave you the right? Who na jua uchungwa kuzaa mtoto? I love. That's the way how we have spoiled the world because we have our own standards, the worldly standards, not godly standards. So we are sparing the uh, sparing the road and we are spoiling our own children. Yeah, exactly. But we are we will we are the same very very people who will later cry and start complaining exactly. and asking God questions why 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 why. Yeah. Again on the same subject. I don't want to say every child whether we both grew in the same uh, in the same environment we will all be the same there are those who will learn mm-hmm. and there are those who will just try to be themselves they don't care whatever you say they don't mind they don't take it wonder to kuishi maisha yao like you know you have children and you've tried to raise them as a pastor mm-hmm. you as a pastor mm-hmm. you have children and i as a pastor i've children and i've tried to raise these children in a godly way mm-hmm. and i've tried as much as i can as god leads me and the spirit of god leads me mm-hmm. a few a few people have taken it and uh, some have not mm-hmm. yep they've it, just ended up doing whatever they want and effectively serving the devil as much as they can mm-hmm. and you still need to go stand on the pulpit and preach how do you deal with this First of all um I proposed 22 mm-hmm. was 6 train a child the way to go and when he's grown up mm-hmm. he will not leave those ways or will not part from it so training a child you start at birth that's when you start training and a child will never depart and you know child we have stages we have three stages somebody who is called a child mm-hmm. from 0 to 5 years what we call the early child from 6 uh, to 12 of the middle child from 13 to 18 uh, then you are uh, that's the uh, adolescent then you become an adult that's where the pipe say when you cross up you have become an adult and you have been trained in God's ways you not part from them and sometimes we we have this myths that pastors who pray for children and uh, the the demons go back to their families <laughs> it's not true <laughs> it's not true it's also uh, you need also wisdom as a pastor how to train your child uh, let them not look at god as um, a slave driver yeah mm-hmm. you must do this you must do this you must do this A child is a child when you start training him or her at that early age let it they will enjoy it because in the way you have trained them but uh, most of the pastors you you a child can't play a child can't uh, can't mix with other children yeah because you feel they will uh, yes, you know yes. there is this uh, norm that people usually say birds of the same feathers will flock together mm-hmm. yeah and uh, if, if if allow my daughter or my son to go and play with those kids they will teach him the bad behaviors mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. so you are not training with a nine fist i told you this i told you must this and uh, there's very strange ways of uh, of training it makes a child feel that uh, this god uh, is not a, a good person teach him about the loving the love of god is a loving god not a, a master unasema kama mungu kama wewe mungu ni baba na ni kama yeni baba yangu yeye akae kaa wherever i've seen from my father is enough 
Yes. <laughs> and, uh, mm. I can't compare First things. First, they, they started yeah. dropping my father from my family, from mm. home. Mm. I never see him. When he comes, I answer, Mwame Homba, Mwame Soma, Biblia. So that I saw my channel come and see Shakua with the story. You know, like, bad stories, uh, bad time stories, the good things Jesus did, the good, how God is loving God and praying with the, the child and before switching off the light of his bedroom. That's where you start. And as they grow, they learn. You make your house a, a treasure house where now they can st start discovering God on their own. Yeah, someone someone is asking here, you know, uh, 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 caning children or disciplining children is part of uh, is part of raising children, and the Bible says talks of you know you sparing uh, you spare the road and you spoil the child. Yes. And this road is it a, a literal road like a cane or uh, it's something different? And if it's a literal cane, uh, to which extent should you discipline the child? Because there are people who go who discipline to the extreme. Yeah, that yeah. is not proper. Mm -hmm. But uh, at what stage you start the earliest stage? Even uh, a child who understands that a rod can inflict some pain because you have seen, you have made a mistake rather. You have done something wrong. And you don't uh, strike the rod, even to that small child, without telling the child, when you do this, this is what you receive. So you first tell them why you are why you killing them. Mm -hmm. You don't just come from where and just start beating and them. Start beating. And don't use your hand. Your hand is supposed to be comforting, receiving the child. Now what do you use? A carrot. <laughs> like a, a small, small rod. carrot. But there are people who come in there are people come in there are people who come in per se. They say they use anything that is available. And I believe those are the families that we lived in. Okay, my father never used to do that. But there are people who say that's how their parents used to do that. As long as a meskiu umekosa, hata haja confirm kama umekosa. Na umu hata hiyo vitole na mitoma. Yes, hata umu vitole na mitoma. Wash your shoes. Yes, whatever is there, they will use it to yeah, that's not a problem. beat you up. The Bible, the Bible mentions a rod. A rod is... A, a sort of stick, but it depends on the how you you, you inflict it on the child. Eh? Don't don't uh, beat as if you are killing a snake. Then they will tell you that beating the demons out of you. They are not beating you, but they're beating the demons out of you. They themselves have demons. So we should start with them first. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 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 and someone says over here, no, Mimi nilikuwa hivyo na and that's how things work for me because of those skins I am who I am without those skins maybe I could have become another different person. What's your take on that? That's true. Yeah. They they help. Like even me. Yeah. Uh, if 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 my brothers or my cousins fought and my dad came I was also to receive canes like they will receive. But you were not involved. That is your brother's you. keeper. But they're stronger than me. There's nothing I can You will start him saying, Mukifanya ibi ni tamsema, mutapokea kiboku. So actually it was to teach us that do not be involved in anything that is wicked. Well, they would tell us, why didn't you refuse them? So I get a share of it. <laughs> <laughs> why did you not go report? So you, 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 are, um, you are actually taking care of your, your brother, not only for comfort, also to restrict him or her doing something mm -hmm. that he will cause him to receive a cane or me because I was there and didn't stop you. And you've heard of this, uh, this phrase, you know? Uh, some parents will say, you know, si tumejaribu, mtoto wa metushinda. Yeah. Is there any case where mtoto na shinanga mzazi wake? Yeah, wana washinda. Because you didn't study properly. You cannot uh, straighten a, a, a grown-up tree. If you want to shape it to grow straight, start when it's still flexible. At the very early age. Wasulio nasema mkunja samaki ya kiwa mbichi. Yeah. Ama yeah. chumo kikunja kikiwa moto. Yes. Mm. Nowadays, we are even paying children to eat. And akulisa ni kikula utanipa nini? Amo utampatia simu. Acheze. 
<laughs> so you're bribing turn, turn the child is for your good. If I were to do, behave like that in Galalanja, they take it, give somebody no, his, no, no, and I'm going to go and I'm going to go and I'm going to go. I'm going to go and I'm going to go. Yes. And I'm going to go and I'm going to go and I'm going to go. That's part of the training. So literally training, training our children or uh, raising our children is not an easy thing without God involved in it. it is, we will yeah, miss it completely God because we will start, imp- we start imposing what we feel is good for the children that might not be good for them. Yeah. And as we started, we said every child is unique in their own way. Yeah. So we are dealing with their uniqueness. Mm-hmm. We cannot say what in Watoto are Ambundo. So we do them as Ambundo side. Exactly. The very yeah, child, children. the very children of Ambundo, they're both different. They are different and unique in a different way. Yeah. So it's up to the father to try to understand the children and try to raise them the mm-hmm. way God wants them to raise. Exactly. Yeah. And start early. Yeah. Mm. When the when when you start now, what is early? Because at one year, some people tell you, "Mtoto asiki atu kimwambia has afanya nini asiki akuna tinya na jifunza baka fikas jumi ya kanga pindi." What when is early? Mtoto starts learning the moment she starts the kid the, the infant starts suckling her mom. So you mean when I mom. talk to them, the that's a training. the train they will uh, the mouth will find where the the the, the breast is but uh, you, you, you there is a way you hold and uh, so that uh, mm-hmm. and that's and it continues up to even a toilet training so it starts the training starts as early as that and when it says when you cross up you'll not depart it doesn't mean he will it depart and then come back It means he has grown into it and he continues into it. So it becomes part of his DNA. Exactly. That he cannot live without, he or she cannot live without mm-hmm. it. One more question as we finish up. We've talked more about boys and girls. Mm-hmm. When do fathers come in for their girls? Because there are a given stages where they have outgrown, okay, people say they have outgrown our care now as fathers. Mm-hmm. But remember they are single fathers. Yeah. And they are raising up girls. <laughs> single fathers yeah raising up girls raising up girls yeah no mother no mother no mother maybe it never worked between the mother and the father so the mother left but left the daughter to yes the the, there is a certain age a father will uh, be taking care of the daughter washing dressing at that time also should be training him or her if you are a mother your son or your father your daughter at that early age as you are dressing him the uh, underpants and uh, whatever start training this is how you put your leg here and this here and pull it up and this take a hand here and this and pull it over your head and pull it when it reaches a certain age then you let the child you love known how to dress at that early age even bathing start teaching them how to drop their backs and the hand the head and when they are bathing i hope it comes to a point where as a father you can't continue doing it mm-hmm. like yeah. you have to let go yeah. and is it right for you to involve maybe your mother is still living or uh, they, your they, sister yeah, or, or someone else or uh, get a housemate of uh, if she's a girl with the girls or a boy if the boys who will train them father on what's supposed to happen when you are not there but if the boys you can train them up to whatever age, age they, uh, you yeah. can yeah, but because you girls, can handle that for girls yes but your mom may not be there to do that But their mothers who taking care of the boys and they're comfortable with that okay that's a different story again mm-hmm. when we talk about it yeah mm-hmm. so what are your final remarks on the issue of children child bearing uh child bearing children in marriage and then child upbringing child look at that camera there and tell child me. bearing we said first of all when you get married expect a gift from god within one year and when it comes accept it if it doesn't come wait upon the lord he'll bring it at due time 
If not, accept after you have been checked and found you are not able to do that, then accept to live without a child. But there is a way you can get your own children by adapting them and you will still have that love you would have had with your biological child. That's your child bearing. Uh, when you are blessed and you have them also, you must have planned before even getting married that you, how many children would we want to. Then you can now start doing what? Family planning after you have received some children. Don't start planning before you have received. <laughs> <laughs> Unless if you are not ready. Just at in your point, don't stop planning your family before you receive the children. Yeah, because it's a gift and God gives it when it's ready. And when you are ready to get married, also know that we will need children then when they come, let us receive them. If you are not prepared, talk. Otherwise, it brings conflict within marriages. A man wants a child, the mother says, I'm the carrier, I'm not ready. You have not agreed. Get married after you have agreed. Bring them up. Start as early as possible. One way of bringing them up is training them in God's way. Have a ceaseless, watchful eye over your child, how the child moves, how you cross up, and how you train through the stages up to wherever he'll be when he has grown up into a man or a she has grown up into a woman. Those that have um, uh, joined marriage where a man comes like we say, it should it happen for those who, before they became Christians, or it happened that uh, you have uh, children and another mom has come in with other children. All of them are your children. If somebody can adopt a child and loves that child as his own daughter or son, why not from the wife who is your wife? was children from her from your current DNA husband from yeah so all of them are your children and you should accept them that way accept them and they love are, them they are very innocent and gifts to their parents so please don't go give your tithe or offering in the church when you hate your stepdaughter or stepson first love them before you go to uh, God. yes i uh, angela angela is asking us next time to talk about loss and grief in marriage you're living together and maybe uh, your, your wife or your husband dies. Mm -hmm. Asking us to get through that process. And now that you're a counselor, I, I think you're the right person to take us through that process. You have lost a spouse. You've lost a, uh, lost a spouse, yeah. Yes. Mm. How do you do that? But let that be in the next episode because time is not on our side. And the show is How Can We Know Unless Someone Explains to Us. The best show in 254, that is Kenya, in Eastern Central Africa, and even the world at large because the questions that we're receiving here, they're not just from East Africa and Kenya. Mm -hmm. They're guys watching us from uh, afar. And they really want to know. And they are really, really enjoying the show. Amen. So we keep on. God bless them. God bless Everybody you from wherever you are. Yes. And make sure you subscribe. And we said this show is the best show ever that you can watch. There's no parent guidance here. Parental guidance. Our husband and wife can watch. Parents can watch with their children. Hmm. So put it on that list <laughs> that you for uh, the list of what you're watching each and every time yeah, and just with your make children yes with your children too because it's so informative and refer it to someone else yeah it's part of the training it's part of the training yes so guys We're should you be paying us for this i bet i bet we will never do that you know to give them an m -pesa yes. number yes i'm not giving you an m -pesa <laughs> number but if you think you can support us okay do it on your own way. <laughs> Support us by commenting and sharing the show. Yes. That's all we need. Amen. Yes, if you meet us on the way, make sure you greet us. And make sure you share it to each and every person. Yeah, oh yes. That is the support Greater we need from you. Yeah. Yes. So keep it locked. Alan Hoy YouTube channel. And how can we know unless someone explains to us the best show in Eastern Central Africa with the super host? Huh?
Alan Hoy and co-hosted with uh, various people. And today we have Reverend Ambundo. Next time we have Ben Face Nyangolo. And the yeah. wisdom is pouring. Amen. 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 Thank you. Meet you next time. Same place. Same time. And remember the show airs each and every Monday, Tuesday, Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday. And that is at 8 p.m. 8 p.m. on Monday. 8 p.m. on Wednesday. 8 p.m. on Saturday. And when it comes to that point, don't die on the knob. Leave it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Alan Hoya. Thank you so much, guys. Until next time we meet, God bless you. Bye bye.